Today is Tuesday, November 1st. We'll tell you the issues many voters say are at the top of their list one week before Election Day. And a significant issue is now in front of the U.S. Supreme Court, what justices are signaling about the cases involving affirmative action. Also, the ruling is in, what a judge decided about two of the largest book publishers joining forces. Plus, the latest changes that could be coming to Twitter, what Instagram is saying about a bizarre outage yesterday, and Taylor Swift broke yet another record with her newest album. Those stories and more coming up. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. We are now just one week away from Election Day, and the outcome of the midterms could shift the balance of power in Congress. If you haven't voted early, Election Day is next Tuesday, November 8th. For the candidates on the ballots in the cities and states across the country, the next seven days will likely be one big nonstop push to the finish line. Currently, Democrats control both the U.S. House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate. A number of political analysts, though, say there's a good chance that will change after next week. Republicans are favored to take back the House, and now some polls show them taking the Senate as well. States like Georgia and Arizona that tipped towards Democrats in 2020 could be on the verge of tipping back towards Republicans. Two of the biggest issues that voters say are important to them this time around are the economy and crime. Most people polled believe the GOP would handle those issues better. Democrats were mostly pushing their support for abortion rights after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. And that's an important issue for voters, too. But some polls say it may have faded now. To put all of this into perspective, it is usually common for the party in power to lose races in swing states and districts in the midterms. And sure enough, that's what Democrats are facing. It's how much they lose that will say a lot about how many in the country are feeling about the job they've been doing. Voter turnout could make a big difference, too. If you plan on voting, make sure you check to see which polling location you have to go to. You can find helpful voting resources on nonpartisan sites like vote.org. There are some new details about the violent plans of the man who broke into House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's San Francisco home. The suspect, David DePop, told police he wanted to hold the Democratic leader hostage and, quote, break her kneecaps. Court documents also say the attacker brought with him a roll of tape, rope, zip ties, two hammers, and a journal. Authorities say his motive was to show other members of Congress that there were, quote, consequences to actions. But when DePop broke his way into Pelosi's home late at night last week, she wasn't there. Only her 82-year-old husband, Paul, was. Police say the suspect woke him up and demanded to talk to Nancy. And at some point, Paul was able to call 911 for help, though he was hit with a hammer just as officers arrived and arrested the attacker. He's being treated at the hospital for serious injuries, though he is expected to recover in time. Police say the two did not know each other. San Francisco's district attorney announced the attack was politically motivated. She also urged people to, quote, watch the words that we say and to turn down the volume of our political rhetoric. This attack comes as U.S. Capitol Police say they're seeing a record number of threats against Congress members. And federal authorities have warned about the possibility of more extreme violence at not just politicians, but also election workers, judges, and more. DePop has been charged with a number of serious crimes, including attempted murder. He is expected in court today. It is one of the most significant issues America's highest court will hear this term, and arguments in the two cases involving affirmative action are now underway. The U.S. Supreme Court heard nearly five hours of arguments yesterday, and so far, the court's conservative majority is signaling they may be up for overturning the practice of giving racial minorities preferential treatment on college applications. The court just wrapped up hearing challenges to affirmative action policies at the University of North Carolina and Harvard. Conservative justices questioned the legal reasoning for allowing the practice— They also debated how colleges and universities might switch to new race-neutral admissions policies where everyone is treated the same regardless of race. On the opposite side, the three liberal justices defended affirmative action. They went into detail about why having diversity on campus is important, the difficulties that come with creating diverse schools when race is not allowed to be considered, and said it's just one consideration of many. Affirmative action has been a controversial issue since it was introduced back in the 1960s civil rights era. The Supreme Court has upheld the practice of using race as a factor for college admission once before, back in 1978. Now it seems it may be reconsidered. Whatever the justices decide, we likely won't know the outcome for some time. The final decision on affirmative action is not expected until next June. 
millions of innocent people in Ukraine are again struggling for water and power. Dozens of Russian missiles rained down on the country's critical electrical infrastructure. The explosions left 80 percent of Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, without running water. Russian President Vladimir Putin said the missile barrage was in response to Ukraine attacking Russian naval ships in the Black Sea, though Ukraine says it did not play any part in those attacks. Ukraine says Russia has resorted to making the Ukrainian citizens suffer because of the Russian military's failures on the battlefield. Ukraine's military said it managed to shoot down the vast majority of the 50 missiles Russia fired, but the ones that got through caused some major damage. Russia's war on Ukraine is said to be at least partly to blame for a diesel shortage here in the United States. Prices are up, supply is down, and Bloomberg reports some areas in the Northeast have already started rationing fuel. The diesel fuel supply nationwide is at the lowest seasonal level ever heading into winter. The impact will first be felt by farmers and businesses since farming equipment and the trucking industry rely on diesel. But those extra costs could be passed on to consumers. It could also drive up the cost of heating this winter. Separately, it seems the inventory of new cars is starting to come back and prices are finally starting to come down. The Wall Street Journal cites research from J.D. Power that found consumers paid an average of $45,600 for a new car or truck last month, and that's several hundred dollars down from the peak over the summer. Used car prices started to level off this spring and have continued to cool in recent months as well. But prices on both new and used vehicles are still said to be about 30 to 50 percent higher than they were before the pandemic. All right, we have more news for you still coming up. But first, let's take a quick break for our sponsor. I love spending more time with family around the holidays. I don't love having to spend time searching for the perfect gift for everyone. And yet I want to give my loved ones something special. So that's why I love KiwiCo for the kids in my life. It is totally kid approved. In fact, even before these super cool science, technology, and art projects are shipped around the world, they are tested by a crew of real kid testers to ensure each one is age appropriate and totally fun. My one-year-old loves the toys that come in his KiwiCo crate, and I love knowing the materials are high quality and expertly built to help him learn new skills. And for my niece, who is a bit older, she gets projects that wow her while also teaching her about cool things like how to engineer a domino machine, for example. As a parent, it can be hard to find creative ways to keep our children busy and challenged. KiwiCo makes it easy. Give awesome this holiday with KiwiCo. Get your first month free on any crate line at kiwico.com slash newsworthy. That's your first month free at k-i-w-i-c-o dot com slash newsworthy. Kiwico.com slash newsworthy. Two of the biggest book publishers will not be allowed to join forces. A federal judge blocked Penguin Random House from buying Simon & Schuster, agreeing with the U.S. Justice Department that the combo would illegally reduce competition in the industry and have too much control over how much authors are paid. The companies had tried to argue that the merger would actually benefit writers and readers since it would lead to cost savings and allow the larger companies to spend even more money on books. So Penguin Random House plans to appeal. Elon Musk is continuing his efforts to reimagine Twitter. As you know, the world's richest man is now the new owner of the social media platform. And as part of his $44 billion takeover, Twitter's nine-member board of directors has been dissolved. And remember, he already fired four of Twitter's top executives. So Musk is now the sole director of the social media company, though he said in a tweet yesterday that it is only temporary. Still, many more changes could be coming. The Wall Street Journal reports he plans to expand Twitter's subscription service in an effort to rely less on advertisers. And The Verge has reported that could include charging up to $20 a month to get a verified blue check mark. His team has also said he wants to add ways for content creators to make money on the platform, like many do on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Axios reports Twitter might even be working to bring back the short-form video app called Vine that the company had ditched back in 2016. So stay tuned. A bizarre outage on Instagram caused a bunch of issues for users yesterday, from not being able to access the app to changing some follower counts and even notifying some people that they had been suspended from the platform when really they had no reason to be. Instagram acknowledged the issues and said the change in follower counts was temporary. The company also said the bug has now been resolved. Superstar Taylor Swift continues to break record after record. For the first time ever in the history of the Billboard Top 100 songs, the top 10 songs all belong to just one artist. Yep, Taylor Swift. All of them from her latest album, Midnight's. In the 64 years the list has been around, no other artist has managed to do that. 
Before Taylor, singer Drake came close when his songs filled nine of the top ten spots. The album has already broken digital streaming records on Spotify. It also shot her past the Beatles for the most titles from the top of the Hot 100 in a single week. Meanwhile, Taylor has surpassed another musical legend. Her song's popularity have now given her more top 10 hits than any other woman in the chart's history. That was a record previously held by Madonna. She had 38 top 10 hits. Taylor now has 40. Well, that's it for the main news today. So now it's time for Trivia Tuesday, when we ask a different trivia question every week. But first, a quick ad break. I'm Khalil Gibran Muhammad. I'm Ben Austin. We're two best friends. One black. One white. I'm a historian. And I'm a journalist. And we are back for season two of Some of My Best Friends Are, where we have real talk about the absurdities and intricacies of race in America. We know that interracial friendship isn't going to solve the problems of our deeply divided country. So what can we do? Check in each week and find out as we talk to notable guests like former Attorney General Eric Holder and restorative justice leader Danielle Serrett about how to make sense of this moment. We will talk about everything from historic interracial friendships to the fall of American democracy to Marvel comics, TV shows, and more. Listen to season two of Some of My Best Friends Are wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, now back to Trivia Tuesday. Today's trivia question is, what U.S. fast food chain is credited with introducing the first drive through window to the masses? You can answer the question and play along on Instagram. Just find and follow us at NewsworthyPod and look for the trivia quiz in our Instagram stories today. As for last week's trivia question, what is the highest grossing movie of all time? The answer is Avatar. The futuristic sci-fi film earned $2.84 billion at the global box office. It came out in December of 2009. And almost 13 years to the day, the sequel to the film is set to be released. Yep, Avatar The Way of Water is scheduled to debut next month. James Cameron directed the first Avatar film, as well as the upcoming sequel, which is expected to be at least three hours long. And that's not all. Three more Avatar films are set to be released in 2024, 2026, and 2028. The next two highest grossing movies of all time around the world are Avengers Endgame from 2019 and in third place, Titanic from 1997. Well, thank you so much for listening today and joining us every day as part of your morning routine. We'll be back with another news roundup tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. 